A lot of people have been excited about the Redmi K20 Pro. So being someone who takes part in the Xiaomi Redmi MIUI community, I thought I would do a Q&A. Hey, my name is Mitchell. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about the tech I use. Before we get into this Q&A, I wanna thank everyone that uses my affiliate links. Honestly, without your support, I couldn't buy things like the Redmi K20 Pro and I couldn't do Q&As like this. Also, a lot of the questions from this come from the Telegram community uh, as well as my Facebook community. So if you're not part of my Telegram community, think about joining, link in the description. Okay, enough talking, let's hop into this video. Uh, now I'm gonna be taking all of these questions off of my Pocophone F1. As you guys know, I've been a long time Poco fan and user. First question, uh, please compare rear camera portrait samples of K20 Pro and Mi 9 in daylight and in indoor lighting conditions with human subject. Uh, I have a link up here to a camera uh, comparison or a camera video I did about the Xiaomi Mi 9 uh, versus the Redmi K20 Pro in a controlled indoor and outdoor environment uh, using portrait mode. Um, I'll also go ahead and throw up some images for you guys to see of the front facing portrait mode with a variety of human subjects from the K20 Pro. Thanks for the question. Please do a charge test of the Poco F1 with the 27 watt charger of the Mi 9 as well as the charger that comes with the K20 Pro stock. I will insert this video when I have finished it, uh, but long story less long, the difference between the K20 Pro's uh, an 18 watt charger and the Mi 9 27 watt charger. Uh, in regards to zero to 100 battery time, it's not a big difference in battery. We're talking, uh, I think the difference was like 16 minutes, maybe a little bit less uh, between the two devices. The place where the 27 watt charger really shines and where I think it's worth it, if you're going to buy it, I don't think it's worth it, but if you wanna buy it, is to take your phone from like 10% up to like 40% in 10 minutes. But to go from 100%, it's not worth buying, save your money. Same with the Poco F1. Uh, do they all support camera to API for Gcam? Yes, they do. And for people that might be having issues, you can actually use the ADB Fastboot tool that I use to debloat them, link to that up here, to enable camera to API if you have a Xiaomi device that does not support it out of the box. How is the display quality of the Redmi K20 Pro? Is it the same as the Mi 9? Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys a video. I'm gonna set uh, the, my camera to the same exposure. I'm gonna turn both of these displays up to their max brightness so you guys can see the difference. Uh, overall display quality, I don't know how to measure necessarily display quality. I watched HDR10 content on both devices and the quality is great. Um, maybe the display of the Mi 9 is better because it's a Samsung manufactured display. It's something that Xiaomi boasted about when they released the Mi 9 was the quality of the display. Um, so I would say that they're either equal or the Mi 9 is slightly better only because it's manufactured by Samsung. Uh, which has less stutters and frame drops? Is there a difference in micro stutters? Uh, I don't notice micro stutters on any of these devices, at least once I have them running Xiaomi EU. Uh, when I'm on the stock software, uh, I've noticed like other weird hiccups, but like I, I don't understand what's being asked by like micro stutters. All of these devices have run really, really smooth. Uh, they run pretty smooth in stock form, but like on a de-bloated Xiaomi EU ROM, they run even smoother. Uh, which has better battery life, Mi 9 or K20? K20 does. K20 has a bigger battery. Mi 9 uh, using GSAM for it to like monitor the battery, getting about six and a half to seven hours screen on time with the Mi 9. I recently had a full rundown test, and I think I have a screenshot of it that I'll insert here of the K20 Pro, and I got, a, I think it was eight hours, 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, depending upon software updates and optimization, you're looking at between eight to nine and a half hours mixed Wi-Fi and 3G on the K20 Pro. Uh, how is the display quality? Here's another how is the display quality question uh, compared to the Poco F1. Um, the display of the Poco F1 has like a high brightness or a high contrast mode, which is great for like seeing outdoors and it changes the colors 
to make them more contrasty under direct sunlight. This is something that the Mi 9 has, uh, but I haven't seen the high brightness mode yet um, or anything that apparent come up on the Redmi K20 Pro. Which is more premium feeling out of the Mi 9 versus the K20 Pro? Uh, it's not even close. The Mi 9 feels just so much better in your hand. Um, one of the first things I noticed when I got the Mi 9 is it doesn't feel cheap, and I don't wanna use the word cheap, but it just doesn't feel as well finished. The attention to detail just doesn't feel the same as it does on the Mi 9. Uh, there's definitely some like hollow space in the K20 Pro, right? Like if, if you tap on it, maybe they didn't do the best job of packaging it, whereas the Mi 9, it feels just like a solid piece. And in your hand, um, it feels better. Also, the vibration motor on the K20 Pro, I really don't like it. The vibration motor feels like it's vibrating the phone apart. Uh, the haptic feedback engine, in my opinion, on the K20 Pro, it's not great. Uh, check the speed test via mobile network and Wi-Fi. I'll insert uh, some uh, screenshots of using speed test uh, out and about today uh, on Wi-Fi. I don't have a five gigahertz router. The Wi-Fi signal I have at my house is supposed to be 40 up uh, or 40 down, I should say. So I'll insert those for you guys. Uh, how is cell reception in low signal areas? This is something that I'm not exactly sure how to test because at least where I live in Hanoi, um, the cell phone reception is pretty good for uh, HSPDA plus. For LTE, um, I'll go through times where it just drops LTE and I'm on uh, 4G or 3, whatever it is, like the slower speed. Uh, but I haven't noticed a difference between the Pocophone F1 and the Redmi K20 Pro. The Redmi K20 Pro has been pretty good for reception, I feel like. Uh, how is touch, swipe at the edges, quick typing on the keyboard? Is it suffering from a input display lag? Uh, no. I know that people had issues with it with the Poco F1. I've had none of it. Uh, it responds great. I, I don't know what else to say. Response time on it, been fantastic. I haven't known any, noticed any type of display issues with it registering touches. Also, I wanna say that uh, with the uh, display of the Poco F1, all of my display issues were fixed with software. I know people in the Indian market, it wasn't fixed with software. For my Poco F1, it was fixed with software. Uh, let's see. Test EIS on the front camera for video. I will go ahead and throw up a video that I took today with the me. Or I'm sorry, with the K20 Pro, so you guys can see uh, how the EIS is for front-facing video. Any micro stutters in the UI smoothness? No, it's it's smooth. How is the bottom speaker loudness? Bottom speaker is good. I would say that the Pocophone F1 is as good, if not a little bit better, just because it had the front speaker that would fire. Um, I haven't really noticed like that. I don't I don't know how to measure that for you guys, but I haven't noticed that big of a difference or like a drop off from the Poco F1 to the K20 Pro. So if you're happy with the loudness of the Poco F1, you'll probably be happy with the volume on the K20 Pro. It's got a matte plastic finish on it. It snaps closed magnetically. It's got a USB type C charging port on the bottom. It has yeah, so what shape? Form. I have my website that I try to update as often as possible uh, in the description down below. Check out the website. Okay, enough talking. Let's just hop into this video. Now Check the display in dark room. How are the blacks? Uh, I'll throw a screenshot up of what it looks like. Uh, it's an AMOLED display. When the screen is not illuminated for some parts of it, it's simply not illuminated. Uh, it, it's off. Like that's how, that's how super AMOLED displays work. Uh, and I, I don't really see any bleeding. Uh, again, AMOLED display. 
How is GPS formance, performance strength and time to lock? Uh, it's faster than the Poco F1. It's the same speed as it is with the Mi 9. Both of them offer the dual GPS functionality or like the added feature of dual GPS. In low light, can cameras other than 48 megapixel be used? Yeah, you can use any of the cameras in low light. What's the quality of it? Uh, I did a comparison between the Poco F1 and the Mi 9 for the cameras up here. Uh, time to charge the phone over stock. Time to charge the phone over stock charger. Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head. I, again, I have a video of it up here. On the stock charger, I think 15 minutes had you at like 22%. Uh, and then at, uh, at 50% took 30, almost 30 minutes exactly. 75% was around the 48 or 50 minute mark. And then 100% with the stock charger took like an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, also, it's important to note that battery charge times will be dependent on temperature. If your phone's in a hot climate, it will charge slower. So I, sure, for me in my climate at this temperature, it might charge at this speed, but that's not for everybody. How does the status notification LED look like? At what angles is it legible? I'll have a uh, I'll, I'll have a picture of it in a dark room for you guys, but it is at the top of the display. It is only um, legible if you are looking at the top of the display. If you're looking at the front of the phone, you can't see it. Which phone is more worth to buy? Uh, if, if I had to pick between which phone between the Poco F1 uh, at $300, the Redmi K20 Pro at um, $350, or the Mi 9 at like $350. Um, I am probably going to go, probably gonna go with the, I, I would have a hard time deciding between the Redmi K20 Pro and the Mi 9, um, if if I ha if money was a big issue uh, and I had to like wait four to five months with whatever my current phone was in order to afford any of these versus the Poco F1, I would get the Poco F1. Uh, if you have to wait two or three months and you need a phone right now, the Poco F1 is a great phone. I, I still really like it. And on top of that, the software experience with it, uh, it's better. It, it's that simple, especially because of the developer community. Does it have no, yes, it does have uh, UFS, no, the uh, K20 Pro does not have UFS 3.1 storage. Uh, please show the fingerprint scanner animations and pop-up camera sound. Uh, the pop-up camera sound, I believe you can do different sounds with. And fingerprint animation, I'll just show you what the fingerprint animations are over this video. Which device has the best, fastest fingerprint scanner? Poco F1, K20 Pro, Xiaomi Mi 9 last place. Uh, which the, uh, he, the Poco has horrible touch display that's very common. Okay. Uh, K20 Pro play YouTube videos in HDR. Yes, you can play YouTube videos in HDR on the K20 Pro and they look amazing and they look fake uh, because of the color being so amazing. Um, okay, that wraps up this Q&A. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for the community support. If you guys have more questions or if you want to make sure you see more of my videos go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see videos about the k20 pro go ahead click or tap this playlist if you guys want to see more videos about the mi 9 click or tap this playlist if you want to subscribe go ahead click the thing right where my nose is and it's been mitchell coming to you guys from hanoi and i will see you soon peace